All right, guys, we're back with another tutorial. We're going to be talking about the save system inside of Unreal Engine, how to create your own save games and set up a single player save your progress system. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, well, actually, here, I'll show you what I'm going to do. My, my goal for this project is this is just the, um, the inventory project that we made in the other videos. Uh, essentially, you can kind of run around here and then it adds items to your inventory, which is right here. So I just picked up a blue shirt, whatever. Uh, I want to have it save that, though. So I'm going to escape real quick and we're going to go down here and create a save game object. So go under blueprints, blueprint class, and just type in save. Uh, click save game, select, I'll type my save game for the title. And then I'm going to make a saving structure, and I'll show you kind of why I do that. Uh, this is kind of the way that I like to do things because it keeps things clean. My save structure. Uh, some tutorials on YouTube are probably going to have you do this a little bit of a different way. Everyone has their own ways of doing it. I personally think that this is the best, though, and I'll kind of explain why as we go along this, and maybe you'll see why, too. Um, I, I'm just going to save a string array, which is the array of items that I have in my inventory. Um, so inventory... And then to kind of go along with this, I'm probably not going to add any functionality here, but let's just say you want to save other things in here too. Like, let's just say this can be the player's name. Or maybe we could have like a name in here and say like levels complete, maybe. And you can add to these as you go along and then pull them and save them and load them and whatever. And I'll show you exactly how that works in just a second here. Um, the save game itself. All we're going to do is have a very simple variable in here. We're just going to call it the actual save game, I guess. And inside here, just type in, what was that? My save struct, struct, my save structure. There it is. So compile, uh, and you can see that this is the information. That way, instead of creating a bunch of variables in here, you just have one structure. And the reason I do that is because I'm actually going to expose this in Blueprints as its own node, where you can kind of make and break this structure instead of having a big stack of things on top of a node. Uh, you'll, you'll see why I do that, but um, this is kind of the best way, in my opinion, to do this. Uh, the next thing, and this is kind of the thing that makes my workflow a little bit unique, I'll go ahead and create a blueprint function library, and we'll call this my save functions. And this is nice because you can just call these saves and call these loads wherever in your game. So we'll just call this save game progress, I guess, and we'll make another one and call it load game progress. So, now, um, the saving is going to be the one that's the most interesting. We'll go ahead and say, I think it's save game exists. Yeah, does save game exist? We'll ask and we'll kind of establish a name for this. So I'll just call this my save. And remember this because we're going to need to use this name several other times. Um, find out if it does exist. We'll make a branch. And if it does not exist, we want to create it. So create save game object. Select our class, uh, my save game, which is the one that we're going to be using. And once it is finished, we will go ahead and actually save the stuff to it. Now, this is actually a save game reference, so we don't need to do any crazy advanced casting or anything. Um, so we'll set, uh, what is it called? Save game. It's called save game. Set save game to an input. So we actually will drag this over here so that this is now exposed. So when the save, when the game progress is saved, it will go down in here and then actually set it to the save game object and then we will actually save the slot so save game to slot the slot name is going to always be the same it's my save um, depends on what you want to call it but just make sure you keep it the same thing this is these slots are kind of how you would establish a slot system so for example if you want to have three or four different slots or maybe allow players to create their own slots you can name them in here like I've, I've in the past I've done slot names like slot one slot two slot three slot four etc and it kind of makes that slot I'm only using one slot though so we're gonna keep it as my save and so if the save game does exist we're gonna want to go ahead and load it so load save okay yeah <laughs> load game from slot is what we want um, my save, just copy and paste that in again, and once this is finished, this is just a save game object, so now we can do our advanced casting. Cast to my save game, and then save the game to the slot. Now, of course, we haven't actually set anything up yet. We need to set that save game first. Set save game. Then we can proceed. Uh, and the reason we do that is the same reason we did it down here. So I'll, I'll kind of read this out loud to you so it makes a little bit more sense here in just a second. Um, because, the, you know, the way this works is a little bit weird, but... I think it'll make a lot more sense once it's actually kind of explained in a way that is understandable. So, if the save game does not exist, it creates a save game and then it sets that 
save game target and then saves the game to the slot. So this actually saves the file right here. If the save game does exist, it has to actually establish it first. We can't just pull it out of thin air. So it loads and of course it returns this value. So essentially this cast is just converting this to the class we created, the save game class, so that we can get and set this value right here. And we of course set that value to what's input to the node. And then once it's finished, it saves a game to slot. Again, both of these at the end are just setting the file. So they save to the file. Otherwise it doesn't do anything. This is just stored in memory. So now that's probably the hardest thing is now out of the way. So we'll go ahead and make our load game progress. So this is going to actually output. So this is, I mean, pretty simple. We load this and we'll just get this. And there's going to be several different outputs just in case it doesn't actually exist. Uh, if it doesn't exist here, let's go ahead and actually just add that again to uh, does the save game exist. We're going to assume that it does. Uh, and if it doesn't, we'll just have another output node output default values. So branch. Assuming that it's true, we're going to load the game from slot, and we'll just get that saved data. Clicking on this, we're just going to go ahead and add an output. Uh, I just typically remove what comes by default, and then I can just drag this into the node pretty easily. That's our return value. I'll just name it return value. And then we'll copy this and paste it down here. Uh, if it doesn't exist, we're just going to return the default value. And if we don't want to return the default value, we could return our own custom stuff too, just by inputting it right here. But I'm just going to recombine the struct pin and keep it the way it is. Compile and save. So now uh, what this is doing is when it loads the game progress, it's going to load that slot, the specified slot. Uh, if it does exist, then it's going to get the information from the save game the same way we saved it uh, and then return it. Or it's, if it doesn't exist, it's just going to return nothing or return what we specify right here. So you're pretty much done here. Uh, I'll show you how to actually get this thing working. Uh, essentially, once you're in here, um, you go ahead and right click and then you can type in save game. And under your my save functions, there will be these two functions. And here they are. Pretty simple. Uh, and you can double click them to go inside of them. It looks like this. And they can be pretty much exposed anywhere um, uh, to your blueprints. You can split the struct pin. You can recombine the struct pin. You can make or break and pick and choose what actually gets loaded. But this is essentially the way it would work. You save it or you load it. And then whatever you do with it from there is what you do with it. The tutorial is pretty much over, so thank you for watching, but if you want to see me integrate it to the actual game here, I'm going to do it really quick, just to kind of show you an example of how it would work. Cool. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a save. Um, we'll go ahead and so go ahead and do save game and scroll up so I can save my game progress. And really, I just want to save um, one thing. So what I would do here, uh, let's go ahead and type load game. We'll load our game progress. We'll drag everything into the specified place. So we're just pulling. We don't need to touch any of this information, but we do want to change our game inventory once this is added. So we'll just go ahead and save what the inventory is once it's added to the actual array. And that should be pretty nice there. Last, we actually need to load it. So next, what we're going to do is go into, I guess, when the player state's actually started. We'll go ahead and do a begin play. Once the player state actually is created, we'll go ahead and load the game progress. Split struct. Go ahead and break this. And we'll just set our inventory before anything else happens. That way our inventory is the same as it was in the last instance that we played the game. Hide unconnected pins to keep things clean. And I think that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and try this out. So here we are in the game. I hit I. I don't really have anything in my inventory. I'm going to go ahead and grab this blue shirt. I now have a blue shirt in my inventory. I'm going to close the game, hit play, and there's my blue shirt as it was. Thank you guys for watching. That's how you would make your own save game system. Pretty simple way to do things. Uh, instead of having to constantly write this code over and over again, I really don't think you need to have this duplication in your blueprints. Uh, so you can just have these two very simple and easy to use nodes with this little blue dot which you use as your struct. Uh, if you want to add any values to this, of course, all you can do is just go back into your actual structure and set the items that you're actually saving right here pretty easily. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thanks for checking it out, and I hope this helps.